this is a holy man of, you know, I know you guys understand what I'm saying. This is Daniel we're speaking of here, okay? Holy man of God, under his, under his, his, his office, he shut down Babylon's rulers, emperors. Do you know how much evil spiritual activity is responsible for keeping those guys in power? One guy's prayer calls are shutting these guys down. Then an angel now appears to this guy. <laughs> and the guy goes down flat. And he to tell the angel, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You need to help me just to be able to hear what you're saying. I think about one of the verses that he was in a deep sleep. Then while he was, as in his body shut, he was shutting down. Another one now, not another angel. Come on, quicken this guy. Yes, giving him strength, give him strength. So the guy now strengthened him. Then he was able to now stand up and then listen to the guy talk. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, this is one of these creatures. Amen. Amen. This is just one creature. Bob Jones, you know, you see lots of angels, all kind of crazy stuff or whatever. One day, well, and this, if you know who this man is, he might be very concerned about what I'm about to say. Okay? This guy, I can't remember what distance he was. One day, he was seeking God or whatever. And then in passing by, a creature he'd never seen before just flashed like supersonic speed, just went past him. And he blacked out for hours. Then after the creature flashed, he now came back. And that's God. What just happened to me? Now these are men that when they enter into Buddhist monks, they shut down every they, not that they go and pray. They're just walking by and they shut down in those places. They they release for on what is now lamentations and, and just prophetic or on what is now words over over a nation that things, you know. Yeah, it's a powerful office. And if you know about the Morgan Falls and all that happened there anyway. So this guy, okay. He asked God, what just happened to me? And God told him that a cherubim flashed past you. Said a cherubim? <laughs> he didn't come and talk to him. He just walked past him. Okay, this is a holy man of God speaking of, okay? Now, <laughs> the Bible says that <laughs> there are new companies of these creatures. <laughs> so all of them, do you have a picture of this? Um, when God told what's his name, Abraham, that you would be your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. When the Bible speaks about numbers, he's speaking about name or identity. What he was saying was that your descendants will be like the stars of heaven. Now, the stars of heaven we're speaking of is not twinkle, twinkle, little star. However, those things they, they're just witnesses of the actual constellations of heaven, which are angelic beings who are given custodianship of different realms of God. Amen. Now. These creatures, if you want to give, have an idea of how many they are, go and start counting how many stars they exist. Now, God dwells in their midst. And it's a humbling experience because he separates himself with a firm mist, a thick veil, so that to them, he is a distant God. Okay? Now, you see the book of Psalms. David is always inviting us into the conversation. He says, God dwells in the midst of the mighty, in the midst of the gods. In some, I think 101 or 103, I can't remember what, 110 or something. Very scary verse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What, what is David doing there? He's saying that when he's saying there is no other God like you, he knows what he's saying. He has seen all kinds of crazy creatures. And he's like, if, if these ones are not gods, who is this person that calls me his friend? Amen. Amen. <laughs> And the funny thing is that all of these creatures, when they see God, look, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, some of the holiest creatures, the seraphim, they're not even seeing God. They're having whiffs, like the heat of, the Bible calls, you know, God is, has many ways he manifests himself to different creatures. I mentioned before that God can come as, uh, what is now, the Bible you're reading, and come as, sounds you hear, and come as, ready visions, okay? They perceive God in a different way. God, the man, when he manifests today, manifests himself to them as a consuming fire. The refiner's fire, the Lord of hosts. When he manifests to them, that revelation of himself that gets to them is burning. Now, they are bearing witness to that burning. And as they're doing so, the, the conviction or the cry they have is, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, what is happening to them? When, <laughs> when that thing, that, that, that revelation of God makes contact with them, Okay, it sends them into a trance. He knows what that the earth is not full of God's glory. How many of you here agree with me here? Okay, but the 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 weight of God's glory is so strong it launches them into a completely different world, and their cry is God, God, God. 
The dust is like the, the picture I have in my mind of this of this thing happening is that you're seeing God as this huge pillar of fire just standing there in the midst. And these guys are just twirling around him. Oh my goodness, they're, they're covering their faces because they've been, they can't behold him. But they're lost in this trance of who is this God? Who is this God? Are you guys listening? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we worship you. We exalt your name. Amen. You are the Almighty God. Yes. You are the all powerful God. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We want to crown you as our king. We want to trade our lives for you, Jesus. We want to trade ourselves for you, Jesus. invites us to this conversation invites us to the courts courtrooms in heaven mm. where we bear witness to this God but they always start out as tiny verses of scripture that maybe manifest as visions in our head tiny you know what I'm saying? tiny things here and there that we can easily ignore mm. now what we're looking for in these scriptures is that we want to watch keep watch over them until we begin to see, I think the Bible says blade first, the ear first, and then the corn. We gaze at the scripture until we begin to see his glory manifest. Now again, <laughs> amen. God, thank you, Jesus. Let's open our Bibles real quick to um, 2 Peter chapter 3. Well, let's start with 2 Peter chapter 1. The truth is that this glory of God has only been seen in shadows. The fullness of it has never been manifested before. It's tabernacled in Jesus, but the fullness of it has never been seen before. It is going to be seen, and it was before. There's this world that God dwells in, that from that separates him from us. In that world, time is non-existent. There's a different way things are quantified. Outside of that world, we have other ways that God has spaced, has dictated things or whatever. In this linear loop, so to speak, that exists, once this age has been expired, it goes by everyone that survives that age, then find themselves in this realm that God dwells in. And God has ways of keeping them. In. There's other realms that they're all going to be dwelling with as well. Amen? The truth is that that realm where God dwells in, it exists now. It exists right now. But to us who are creatures, new creation, old creation, whatever form you're in or whatever, it comes to us as the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? That world comes to us as God's word. That's how it comes to us. Now, God, this is, this is God that he has to help us. Because the truth is that, and I'm saying this to myself as well, <laughs> the truth is that, in reality, it's just because we are not seeing it yet. Mm. That's why we can easily despise yeah, God's mm. word. But the truth is that these creatures, the Bible says they desire to look into these things. Mm. 
So you see the the diligence that they're that they're you know they're, they're expressing. I want to know who God is, and you're seeing all of them. One small way, people don't understand this or whatever. I think it was Pastor who explained this to us or whatever once that what actually happens is that the creatures close to the throne of God, they're the ones that spend the longest time digesting God. And as soon as the conviction hits them, they now begin to release oracles of God. That's where the Holy, 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 Holy Almighty. So they're, they're dwelling on God. Dwelling, dwelling, dwelling. And they release it as a cry. When it was at the cry, the 24 elders who are sitting on the throne, they now listen. As soon as the thing has been downloaded inside, they also release their own cry. When they release their cry, it awakens, opens up all kinds of things in heaven. In heaven. Because what happens is that everything is run by, when we say words, it's not English. The words that we're speaking of. The confession of is not repeat after me in Jesus' name. Amen. I accept the Lord as my Lord and Savior. That's not the actual confession of your heart. It's it's inside here. Look, when it says with your mouth with a mouth, man believes with the heart. When it says your tongue is the rudder, there is an expression of that that's here. But the primary instrument by which we communicate with God is this one. Yes, sir. So all creatures, they don't speak English. No creature speaks English. Mm -hmm. Really. Even we don't speak English. When we speak English, don't understand what I'm saying. You don't understand what I am saying. If I communicate with you, it is this thing that I used to communicate with you in reality. That they already go to heaven. No one, you know, people have experience with being in heaven. They always tell you that I wanted to say something to Jesus, but I'll just think it and Jesus Christ will respond. That's how all creatures interact. So the cries are from deep inside. And they release this thing. When they release it, something breaks open in heaven. All the creatures, all of them now begin to respond in whatever way. And they pass the baton on and on and on and on all the way down. And that's why heaven is this huge chaos of lightnings, thunders, voices, flashes of light, hail, fire, water, wind, and different things that the people in the Bible cannot describe. Why? It's all to, it starts, but it starts off with something very small. One word of God that comes in, and they stay there until the, it, you, you know what I'm saying? They stay with it until the thing explodes. When it explodes in them, they now release it as a conviction. Because they've now borne witness to that thing. They've now sworn off every other revelation of God that exists that is going to, they, they think is going to contradict that one. And they stay in that new platform of that revelation of God that's been revealed. And they now pass, they pass it on. The, the witness, the cry they release, passes it on. The 24 hours, they also inherit that as well. And they pass it on. You guys understand what I'm saying? This is actually what the ministry is supposed to be. Conviction for one person. Have you met Jesus before? Have you met him before? And you have, to talk, you have to speak too much English. Many times, if you really want people to experience God, just go touch the person and then begin to think back of how, what your last encounter with Jesus was like. That last, not just when I encounter, I'm talking about conviction. Something that breaks you. Something that breaks you. When you know it has broken you is when you begin to trade. How do I know when I really met Jesus? It's not after I met Jesus. I will continue with my life <laughs> like nothing has happened. That means you did not meet Jesus. You have not met Jesus yet, or at least not to the degree that you ought to. Amen? Amen. I'm scared now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all sitting. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now the truth is that this person, Jesus, the Bible says, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I feel like it's a mistake here right now. Amen? Amen. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen? Amen? Now, when we're saying the fullness of the Godhead bodily, angels cannot comprehend Amen. that thing. But we'll be given the privilege to see deep inside of him and to now respond. But to be able to see his glory, you have to trade in, everyone say intentionally. 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 You see, this is something that I've been, I've been, I've been noticing really, you know, again, I've been watch, just watching a few things and doing a little bit of research, seeing different moves go, whatever. I've seen that in, in times past, when people got born again, there was something real that happened to them. There were some people that had flaky conversions back then, don't get me wrong. But there's a difference between someone who met God and they're like, you know, when, when a young boy gives life to Christ and he's still saying, can I kiss my girlfriend or can I not kiss my girlfriend? <laughs> How do you know that? 
<laughs> there needs to be more laid on of hands <laughs> and ministers to that person. Amen. <laughs> oh, you're, oh can, is it okay if I date a, a Muslim girl? <laughs> they know there's something wrong. They know that something, something still needs to slap the person somewhere. That's what happens when you meet Jesus. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, in verse 16, he says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, where we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When, when they, there came such a voice from heaven, amazing glory. This is my beloved Son, whom I well pleased. And this voice came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. We have also a more sure word. Everyone say more sure word. More sure word. Now, what they're saying here is that we have seen him, but there's something more sure than what we have even seen. It is this word of God, this word of prophecy. Let's keep on reading here. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star arises. Where? But not in your mind, in your heart. This is what Christianity is all about. It is about this morning star. Jesus, the actual morning star is Jesus. But yet, it's at the heart. Not just that I have mental assent or knowledge. It is that, I, honestly speaking, when this thing hits a person, it's like they're in love with someone. Oh, I can remember, I think it was Jolie saying something or whatever, that when he first got engaged to his wife, that uh, if you just touched him like this, he will fall down talking about his wife, rolling on the ground. <laughs> Amen. That's what happens when someone really meets Jesus. You see them, they change their Facebook, Facebook profile picture, Facebook cover page, they'll change everything, their dressing style, they <laughs> something about crazy. They will actually begin to dress, just, they begin to dress very, very corporately, very, very, the responsible dressing style, something's just, something just change about them. And it's not their, their physical, it's not their physical anything, but they met someone. That's what we're looking for. We want to see Jesus. If we jump to chapter 3, Peter explains the consequences of the, what we call the revelation of Jesus. This is what, what revelation really is. <laughs> revelation, oh no, or what, you know, I know it's language. When someone says Jesus is Lord, that can be revelation. It just means an unveiling, something that wasn't known before. Well, that's unveiling, not an unveiling of English, it's an unveiling of a person. In other words, when it is being spoken, someone must be seen. In other words, when, he's, when, he's, when, when, when those words are being said, Jesus' glory must be made manifest. Hearts have to respond. That's what revelation is. When hearts will see. Because when hearts see, you don't have to tell them. When Paul had an encounter with God on the way to Damascus, what happened? Did anyone have to do follow-up with the conversion? Oh, no. Hello, is this, <laughs> is this Saul of Tarsus' house? Why are the lights off? <laughs> What is that noise I'm hearing? The man was praying and fasting, dry fasting and praying for three days in the dark. You have prophetic gifts all, <laughs> all the gifts that we're looking for. They were manifesting while he was blind. <laughs> and God said, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm looking for such an experience. Because <laughs> honestly speaking, when I want to fast sometimes, some thought process is going through my mind. But when someone has slapped you, <laughs> no one will tell you to fast. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we, we get there by training. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's keep on reading here. Now, this is what we'll get, we'll get to another verse which I explain how training works. In verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that we should all come to repentance. That repentance means the, means the turning of the heart. The Bible says, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. 
Now, the one that's turning is the heart. It's not the mouth, it's not even the mind, it's not even your emotions. It is your heart turning. No, when the Bible says, a broken and a contrite spirit, he will not despise. A contrite, <laughs> quick to repent nature is not, it's a very rare commodity. That's why God will, not, will never neglect that thing. Because not just that, man, this is not, I don't think people understand the weight of what I'm saying here. If you've committed, when someone says, I repent of what I am doing, when you confess, when says, confess your sins, it is that you're releasing, you're releasing this, you're never coming back to this thing again. Yeah. It is a, it is a, a, an allegiance, something made in your, I know if it's one in your heart. It is a real thing that takes place here. I don't care the desire, I don't care the temptation. I am not coming back to this thing again. It's not just saying, you know you can, when you, you do something bad, God, I don't want to do this in life for you. Okay, I'm a good example of myself. I'm, uh, I'm going back to fasting again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really want to break some barriers in my life, but some things are not. Uh, not as fun as I thought, but God is giving grace, amen? I, one thing I'm encouraged about is that as I continue seeking God, these things get a lot easier, amen? Um, I, I like to encourage people. Um, while we at the same time allow ourselves to be challenged towards new things in God, I'm at rest knowing that all I have to do is keep on seeing Jesus and things drop off. When something is taking too long to drop off, I go and shut myself down and kill that thing. And kill that thing. How do you kill that thing? Well, find Jesus. Because this thing is not very complicated. If, you're, if you have something wrong in your life, you want to trade it to God. Just do what the cherubim do. They watch, they watch with dedication, with tenacity, with intention. When the Bible says, seek ye first. I, I heard the definition of that word. When they say seek, you know somehow we seek sparingly. Seeking means to obtain something. When I'm looking for it, I, am, I want to find it. Not that someday I may find it. I, am, I want to find this thing. That's what seeking means. So you will do whatever it takes. That's why you know you're seeking. That's why when we say seeking first, you know, all, all the things that we added to you. God is not lying. You know that when people are doing something that's not seeking and they're complaining about the verse of scripture. When you're seeking, you are seeking. When you're not seeking, you're not, that's something that I think was, that's Chris said this or whatever. When someone, if you did something and the devil did not flee, you did not resist. So don't, we should not argue with the Bible. We just did something. The devil didn't run away. We have not resisted the devil yet. So we've done something and it's wonderful, but we've not resisted yet. Amen. So repentance is a very big deal. That's why God is long-suffering. <laughs> because he knows how long it takes before we come to true, genuine repentance. But the day of the Lord, now he's saying, but <laughs> despite his long suffering, there's an appointed time that will be kept. And that day will come. Now, when we say the day of the Lord, um, how much time do I have? 15. 15 more minutes. The day of the Lord, very simply, is the day when God comes and visits his people. Very, very simple. Now, every one of us, we have these appointed times in our lives. Okay? There's definite time when God will encounter you. It's it's in the in the what is it now? In the scroll or whatever of heaven, the timeline of heaven or whatever. God has appointed times for every single person to encounter, for every single person. Irrespective of whatever happens. They will encounter God in some form or fashion. Might be through his word, through some vivid encounter. It, that's, not, that's not really the issue. The issue is the heart posture when God is revealed. Because mm -hmm. if your heart posture is correct, even if God, if it's a bird that says something, there's a guy that I think it was Eric Gilmore, um, the guy I listened to, or whatever. He was saying something. The time when he got cold and flaccid towards God, and he began to go into a lot of book reading, a lot of studying, and he was not, his heart wasn't tender towards God anymore. And he could tell he was getting angry at his wife, he was getting angry at his kids. Things were just getting really hard and difficult. And then one day, his daughter was watching Sesame Street, so funny cartoon and then all the car all the guys were in the is it cartoon these puppets or whatever they play with each other whatever all of them were attacking this one guy and then the guy just said something i can't live like this anymore now what that puppet said flew from the kids room through the kitchen and came and hit him and he said the same thing i can't live like this anymore mm -hmm. now it was sesame street talking mm -hmm. but that was god that came to him mm -hmm. now he could have said i don't live like this anymore but it's okay i'll continue <laughs> People had very vivid encounters with God and they turned away from God. Mm. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. 
He could have been disobedient to the heavenly vision, but he chose to respond. That is how these creatures work. It's by responding. It's not so much about the, you know, we, we, we oftentimes, uh, many people, they subconsciously think that. I have too much time. Okay, now I have okay, five minutes. Okay. I'll just go, I'll go on five minutes here. They only think that because they hear men of God had a big encounter with God, that it's men of God that have these experiences. Us normal people, because <laughs> I didn't have no time. I haven't really had any big encounter the way Paul had his own. So, us normal people, <laughs> we will just wait until we go to heaven and then we'll ask God. That when we get to heaven, we'll see God then. But everyone else, they get to see God. On the truth is that. <laughs> God weighs, Bible says God is the one of God of knowledge by whom all actions are weighed. He sees our heart's response to any measure of him coming to us. And he's watching very carefully, just like the cherubim are watching. He's watching our, how do we respond to God's word? Are we trading into God's word, however small? Or are we despising him and concealing ourselves from him intentionally? Because to do that, you actually have to shun him intentionally and turn away. Now, what I'm simply giving, um, what is it now as a thing here, whatever, is um, the principle of, of watch, keeping watches or gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is not just spending time in prayer. It's actually watching God's word till it's performed. That's really what it is. God gives you a, pro a word of prophecy. It tells you that in two days, you're going to get two million naira bank account. Many people are very easy to, to get keep over that one. <laughs> Amen. They will hold the word of God like a sword. My father, my, you know, like you were mentioning in prayer. That's like, Amen. God speaks like that. I mean, everyone knows that, right? Because that's, that's really not the primary, that's not the de final destination. The destination is the glory of God, not, not the money. And at the same time, God cares about, anyway, whatever. So that prophecy comes in, okay? Now, we have the responsibility of watching God's word to perform it. As we watch God's words perform it, the Bible describes the process here. We keep on reading here. Dear Lord, we come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also shall, and the works shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That's a good, good question. Looking for and hastening unto, now it says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall, shall melt with fervent heat. Now, the context of this day of the Lord here is not about your financial progress here, okay? Now, everything in scripture scales, when I say scales, it can apply to your entire lifeline. It can apply to your, in, your, your season of your life. It can apply to a ministry, it can apply to the church as global as well, depending on which, you guys, you have to be very yes about the Holy Spirit when you're doing this, but the Holy Spirit gives perspective to all of this, okay? What's happening here is that, in light of what we're discussing here, he's describing what happens to a person when they meet God, in its actual and an actual encounter with God. When the day of the Lord comes, that appointed time when God comes and you meet him, if you are ready, because he's saying here, if you read a few verses before, he's speaking about people who are scorning God and saying the Lord has promised to go to come, this and this and God has spoken before. You know the same Bible, we read this before. It's not the same Sunday we come to church, this and this and this and this and this. You get what I'm saying? Okay? We've, we've gotten slack. Because they believe that God himself is slack concerning his promise. And so they've dropped their, they, they're not diligent anymore towards God's word. Now what's happening here is that the devil will come as a thief in the night. And what should happen is that your heavens and your earth, in other, world, in other words, the world that you knew should be burned with fervent heat. I want to, I really want to stay here for a while. And this is probably where I'm going to end and then, um, what is it, I'll conclude this or whatever. See, a lot of people don't understand, um, think about um, a lot of young people. These young people I usually, I usually speak to when I hang out with or whatever. But I've seen something many young people. You see, the beauty of Jesus is that Jesus is not afraid of our idols. He's not afraid of our desires or the things that distract us. But he wants us to simply seek him. God knows that we have high God. When God came to us, he knew that uh, all the different... If, if I begin to list all my atrocities, we'll be here for a very long time. Just, I'm talking about even after getting caught and go serious with God. Many atrocities I've committed. Like, oh, God saw those things long before. So he's not afraid of those things. 
His concern is come and seek me. Come and trade, come and buy from me. Come and buy from me. Because when we begin to trade with God, when we keep watches, when we stand at the gate, because that's where merchandise takes place. That's where people come in and people go out. That's where trading takes place. As we watch over God's word, waiting for his glory to be made manifest. When eventually the Lord of glory himself comes in, the Bible describes what happens, what happens when a genuine encounter with God takes place. The Bible says, the heavens and the earth will pass away with a great noise. You know, that's what happens when a genuine salvation experience takes place. The world that you knew before is gone. And it is burning with fervent heat. It is burning with fervent heat. What that means is that it didn't just pass away. As it's going, it is now burning. <laughs> Amen. As this world that you knew before is burning, you are supposed to, you are the person who say, hasten, hasten. That's why I ask you, what kind of person ought you to be in all manner of godliness? Now, all those things about godliness and holiness or whatever, is speaking about your tenacity with God's word. God has said something. God has given us promises. How beautiful is Jesus? The Bible said, God is this, God is this, God is that, God is this, God is this. I have not seen it. What are, but God's word is saying this. How 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 willing are you going to how much are you going to trade into seeing God's glory be made manifest in your life? Are you going to wait for how many you know that everyone has the appointed time? If you don't see God now, there is <laughs> there's another time when God will come and it'll be too late. Like someone like what is it? I don't even know this one. You know John, John the Beloved, actually all the apostles. That book of Revelation was just one person's experience. All of them. Paul had his own experience, Peter had his own experience, Judah has his own experience. It's called the apocalypse or the end of this world. That's what the revelation of Jesus Christ means. That, that's, that's something, when Jesus Christ shows up on the scene, your old life should go away. That's how you measure whether you've had a genuine meeting with God. All of them had these experiences. Now, when that happened to them, is it rapture, is it resurrection from the dead, everything, they entered the world to come and they came back out and now began to write stories to us. <laughs> Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So they entered into their appointed time and they came out because they hastened. Hasten. Hasten means you're making it come closer to you. You're making it come closer to you. And then you yourself, you make contact with that person. Now, when you do that, a conviction, a conviction in your, in your heart. And honestly speaking, the way you judge things is just here, this, this heart thing. Your erratic of what reality is, it's this thing here. Even your memories. I can honestly speaking, when 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 um when people have memories, long term, short term, blah 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 blah, things that strike your heart actually give perspective to what you remember. That's why an atheist he will be seeing miracles happening and he will be doubting God because of a bad experience that happened a long time ago. And that's why that same atheist, when he encounters God, all those experiences will make him cry because he's seen the love of God now. So it's not just my memories of or my experiences. How many people are when Jesus shows up on the scene in reality, mm -hmm. when he shows up on the scene, what I, I love the picture I have in my mind is that you have this huge storm cloud. You're standing there just waiting on God, waiting on God. There's a huge storm cloud brewing. It's brewing, it's brewing, it's brewing. And then someone steps out of the storm cloud. As soon as he steps out of the storm cloud, this entire world explodes, starts burning with fire. And it's just you and Jesus there. Drinking coffee, <laughs> drinking coffee on a small stool. Amen? Amen. This is what we're looking for. And it comes by trading. Everyone say trading. 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 Intentionally. We hear words. We hear teachings. We have the Bible. We have the experiences of these men. Allow these things. Allow these things to bear fruits in your life. The Bible is very clear. We are without excuse. When, 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 God is, you know, when God is judging people, what he does that at the very end of whatever, he will just show them the reality of everything. And they themselves, they will know that God's judgment is right. Mm -hmm. No one will be saying, God, no. Like, you know, people, they have encounters in hell. In hell, you can make those cries. It's not fair. It's not fair in hell. When it's time for white throne judgment, all those things, because hell is not, is not the actual, hell is just a, a, a prison yard. They just keep you there temporarily until 
They'll now throw hell, death, and the grave at <laughs> the lake of fire. Amen. <laughs> and where everyone is is that they know that they belong there because they want nothing to do with God. Amen. The point again on Costco is that every time God's word is coming to you in your own see the thing is that many people they again is is the is the parable of the talents here again. Some people five, some people four, some people one. The one that they give one did not give me anything. Let me go and hide this thing. You were a wicked God, austere God. You were a very selfish God assaulting God. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm a wicked God. In fact, I will give a parable that I'm a wicked. What's that parable of the on the wicked judge that fears God? That's me. I am the wicked judge. I don't fear myself. Oh man. <laughs> and when God has finished, bind him hand and foot and cast him into. Amen. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs> oh Lord. Amen. When God is revealed, it is important that we begin to treasure God's word. And we don't allow anything of God to pass us by. We trade into God. We trade into Jesus. We want to experience him. Paul said in Romans chapter 1 that Christianity, Christ, is the power of us. Salvation is from faith to faith. So that means that faith there is a conviction that makes you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's, look, you're confessing allegiance to him. So what happens? First, they meet Jesus. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I should not now go and abandon. After, you know you have to experience God for a while. You kind of begin, the wine begins to subside a little bit and you begin to, okay, now I have the choice now to continue seeking God or to live, just let the wine continue going down and become a dry skin and then wonder where God went. And I begin to remember, ah, when I was a child, when I first gave birth to Christ, I mean, when, uh, when, I said, when I first got born again, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay? That's what, people, that's what happens to many people. What you should do, as soon as you get born again, begin seeking, seeking, trading in. So you have your first experience with God. Allow it to work its way in your soul. Bear witness to that revelation of Jesus. God is love. God loves me. Let every time you say God loves me, let it break you. From there, you break into another experience with God. God hates sin. God hates sin. God hates sin. Break into another experience with God. And as you're doing this, you're leaving a trail behind you. Because when, you're, when your witness goes forth, it provokes other people to now respond to God. This is what Christianity is about. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's from faith to faith. For the just shall live by faith. Amen? Amen. I want us to just respond real quick. I want us to respond really quick. something about setting your heart and intentionally setting aside distractions that has to do with seeing the glory of God. When the valleys are brought up and the mountains are brought down and crooked ways are aligned, his glory is it's easier to see it. I want us to intentionally in our hearts begin to remove distractions from our lives. Lord Jesus, we want to commit ourselves to you. We want to devote ourselves to you, Jesus. We want this world to end. Come, Jesus. 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 Reveal yourself to us, Lord Jesus, through your word.